Have you ever tried to hold off from doing something? And even though you don't want to do it, you kind of feel compelled to, like you have an itch you have to scratch, a form post that must be flamed, or a donut in the cupboard which must be eaten. I like the ones with the sprinkles on them. They're amazing. Well, this video is kind of like that for me. I didn't really want to make it, but something from deep within me took control, made me pick up the camera, hit the record button, and just start babbling. Don't worry, I'm not hearing voices telling me what to do. I understand, mother. You see, on YouTube there's a user called Pat Condell. He's got quite a large following, over 100,000 subscribers, and every time I watch one of his videos, it really just makes me want to stick my fingers into my own eyes uh, or make a video, and I decided to do that. The problem with our Pat is that, yes, he is an atheist, but he's also a bigot. His last few videos have been a diatribe against Saudi Arabia and Islam masquerading as a rational deconstruction of Islamic extremism. Don't get me wrong, I'm all for the actual rational deconstruction of extremist views and actions. Like one time I taught my friend out of dropping his pants in front of a group of police officers and shouting, help officers, someone stole my belt. But it's important to stop and analyse to see if someone actually is being rational or whether they're just claiming to be. Just like some religious figures claim to be pure, good and kind when nothing could be further from the truth. Using rational thought in an attempt to persuade people out of being consumed by primal tribalistic emotion is an extremely noble pursuit. But within the atheist community there's a very vocal minority who like to dress up racism and religious prejudice as logical, fair-minded and scientifically validated assertions. Now let's return to our friend Pat. No, not her. In some of his recent light-hearted videos including The Truth About Islam Can I Say This? and Hello Saudi Arabia Pat seems hell-bent on, instead of constructing an argument against the horrendous human rights violations in Saudi Arabia and the questionable teachings of some imams, to just basically say that all Saudi Muslims are gay. You see, Pat believes that because of the abysmal treatment of homosexuals in Saudi Arabia and due to the general non-acceptance of homosexuality in the Islamic community, that the best course of action is not to present evidence to show that homosexuals are in fact not evil and that homosexuality is not something that you can just simply ignore but rather the best course of action is just to say that everyone in Saudi Arabia is in some sort of gay denying closet waiting to jump out. But let's look at this a little bit closer. Okay, maybe not that close. Pat Condell is not interested in arguing for the equal rights of the gay community, but rather is only looking to annoy, enrage and rile anyone who has any sort of affinity with the Islamic religion. It's the equivalent of being in school and calling someone who is homophobic gay, not because they are gay, but because you know it will wind them up and you will get a reaction. I hate to ask this Pat, but what age are you? I expect to hear this from 12 year olds but not a grown man and when you do hear it from a grown man you're probably going to think that maybe this person isn't arguing from an informed reasoned perspective but is rather motivated by rage, anger, hatred and one-upmanship. You see there's only one thing worse than a lie and that is a half-truth because half-truths reel people in on the back of one real fact which then creates a sense of legitimate authority in the speaker. And the speaker then uses that authority to then splurge all of these useless, biased and unsubstantiated claims which some listeners will then take in and say, well, it must be real because the other things that he said were true. That's exactly what Pat Condell's opinions are, half-truths. There are some decent factual statements made in some of his videos, but they are mixed in with childish comments, scaremongering and hate-filled prejudiced assertions, which Pat then tries to validate by showing how educated and reasonable he is. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you will know that I am against absolutism. Please don't point out that ruling out absolutism is in fact absolutism as well. I'm aware of that. But human beings are unpredictable and inconsistent. And so am I. And it's this absolutist approach 
which denigrates certain groups, which completely undermines exactly what Pat Condell and other more militant atheists claim to stand for. There is a growing ideological movement which argues that religion is poison, that it's evil, that it holds humanity back, and that theists should go the way of the dinosaurs. You know, living in a theme park ran by Richard Attenborough. As I've said before, I am neutral on the whole atheism versus theism debate. I think it's entirely unscientific to claim that God absolutely exists or categorically does not. Both are entrenched viewpoints, but more on that in a future video. That being said, I do find it difficult how anyone can argue that the religious texts should be taken literally just because they're old. I mean, I don't believe everything I read. I don't believe anything I read, which is why I have the IQ of a lobotomised potato. Potato! So I am in agreement with many within the atheist community that holding something up as divine without any evidence is probably more to do with social indoctrination and wishful thinking than any sort of pursuit of a verifiable fact. The scientific method is the only way to proceed here. Which brings us back to Pat Half-Truth Condell and others like him. He makes some great points about freedom of speech. He makes some great points about the treatment of homosexuals. I can't personally stand any form of inequality. He makes great points about extremist ideologies. But Pat, the problem is, your hatred of Islam is an extremist ideology. And because of that, the whole house of cards crumbles under the weight of Mr. Hypocrite. I hate people in beards and silly hats. Mr. Condell paints creeping Sharia as a real factual thing that's actually happening to the world. If you don't know what creeping Sharia is, it's this idea that Muslims are everywhere. Outside, inside, spreading their lies, infiltrating every position in society. So that one day we're going to wake up and there'll be a mosque on every street corner, a burqa on every woman and a complete inability to swear in public. So basically, we're all fucked. Fucking hell. It's begun. Jesus Christ. Ho, ho, ho. He, he cannot, cannot help, help you now. now. This, this is, is the, the voice of creeping Sharia. No more swearing. No more alcohol. No more freedom. And especially, no more masturbating to that porn you keep underneath your bed, Mike. I mean, I've seen some things in my time, but that shit is crazy. Creeping Sharia has spoken. Shazam! It's a ridiculously phobic idea, but sadly in the United Kingdom and other countries it has garnered some support. It kind of reminds me of the paranoia of the 1950s with communism. Watch out for your neighbour, he may be a dirty red. The Muslims are not coming to get you but extremist intolerance of others might. I'll be talking about the concept of tolerance in a future video, but I do believe that tolerance is a two-way street. You have a right to your opinion, but I have a right to criticise that opinion if I disagree with it. I also believe that any form of censorship, regardless of who's doing it to who, is a bad thing. Are there Muslims who want to force their way of life onto everyone else? Absolutely, of course there are. But there are also Christians, Jews, Hindus, atheists, and members of any other group you want to mention who want to put their way of life on you. They think you're wrong, they think they are right, and they think that for the world to be a better place, you should live how they want you to live. And it's this idea that we should be arguing against, debating against, and fighting against. Not picking on one group which, due to recent historical events that involved extremist factions of that group, it's just easy to pick on them because there is a swell of bigotry towards that religion. So if you're interacting with any group out there, you will always find some individuals within that group who are extreme in their views and who do not represent the group in their whole. But someone like Pat Condell proves that extremists might not raise their ugly heads in terms of wearing religious gowns and waving religious iconography. Extremists may come to you wearing a suit, a tie and a shirt, appearing educated and explaining to you how reasonable they really are. That's all I really want to say about it. Go and check out Pat Condell's videos. Let me know what you think about his videos. Let me know what you think about 
religious extremism. Do you believe in what I've said? Do you believe that atheists can be just as extreme? Let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to debate about it. And as always, let's keep it civil. I have no idea where I turned into Sean Connery there. bit blood in my head will just be like fucking scanner actually yeah, I know awesome. what we should end it on greatest death ever the guy that blows up because he becomes too fat at the end of Big Trouble in Little China oh yeah that uh, that I, is I, that thought, is I thought you were going to say like we should, we should uh, you know run out with guns and hands like at the end of uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid <laughs> that's good. remember Live and Let Die as well you almost had an inflated ego oh. himself when he takes a blows up <laughs> oh Big Roger eh Big Roger oh. Right, yeah. we'll be back soon. Bye. See you Bye later, more. troops. For more fun. Bye. Peace out. Potato!